Halo and behind me is the Saturn V and it was this rocket that took humans to the moon in 1969 and in this video I'm going to take you on a detailed tour of it. I'm Paul Stewart and I make videos about planes and a few rockets. This includes trip reports on board international and domestic flights and detailed tours around significant aircraft in museums. If you're into these types of videos then check out my channel and subscribe. The Saturn V was an American super heavy lift launch vehicle developed by NASA during the Apollo program for the eventual moon landing and it was flown between 1967 and 1973. It had three stages with independent engines and fuel tanks and once the fuel was used the stage would be discarded thus reducing weight as it climbs. Stage 1 was powered by five Rockendyne F1 engines that each produced 1.5 million pounds of thrust using kerosene and liquid oxygen. The middle engines were fixed, but their outer four could be turned on a gimbal hydraulically to direct the rocket. Looking closer at the engines, we have the thrust chamber where the fuel is ignited and this is the nozzle. You'll notice piping around it and this actually allowed for the fuel to be pumped around the chamber and nozzle to help reduce the temperature so that it wouldn't melt from the combustion heat itself. The fuel then returned back to the engine where it would enter the combustion chamber itself and then ignite. This thicker tube is the exhaust from the massive turbocharger that was required to force the fuel into the chamber at an incredible speed. For every second each of the five engines would burn 3,945 pounds of liquid oxygen and 1,733 pounds of RP1 which was a highly refined kerosene. So just supplying that much liquid into the combustion chambers would require a massive amount of energy itself. And really that's all this structure of spaghetti was, the turbo pump to push it all in. Once you remove the combustion chamber the whole engine really is quite small. Moving forward we'll look at the rest of the stage 1 which was built by Boeing in New Orleans and most of it was fuel. Behind the surface here was a massive fuel tank storing the RP1 and above that was an even larger tank storing the liquid oxygen. Empty the stage 1 would weigh 289,000 pounds but when fueled and ready for launch it weighed 5,100,000 pounds. The whole rocket was painted white to help reflect some of the heat as it sat in the hot Florida sun and the black shapes were painted on so that the ground cameras could identify roll on the vertical axis during launch. You may wonder how the oxygen travelled down to the engines and past the fuel tank below it and it did that by having a massive pipe running down the centre of the other fuel tank just below it. 2 minutes and 42 seconds after launch and at an altitude of just over 40 miles, the stage 1 had done its job and the engine shut off. Explosive bolts detonate and release the entire stage from the rest of the vehicle and it falls back to earth. It's not displayed here so that you can see inside but there would have been a skirt connecting the two stages called an interstage and it looked like a large ring. Here's a NASA photo of it falling back to earth. And looking inside here you can make out the very top of the liquid oxygen tank which by the way would have been stored at minus 298 degrees Fahrenheit so that it would have been kept in liquid form. But still that is nothing in comparison to the minus 423 degree Fahrenheit temperature of the liquid hydrogen. So many parts of the rocket would have been incredibly cold hence why you often see mist coming off its surface on old launch videos. Now here is the stage 2 built by North American Aviation in California and it's powered by five smaller J2 rockets which produce 230,000 pounds of thrust each. So the combined thrust of all five was still less than a single F1 engine powering stage 1 we just saw earlier. These also require liquid oxygen but instead of the RP1 they use liquid hydrogen which wouldn't produce as much thrust but was much lighter and they fire up immediately after stage 1 is released. Now these here are solid fuel rocket motors and they're designed to separate the two stages. Behind here would be a smaller oxygen tank and the rest of stage 2 is a larger hydrogen tank. When empty the stage 2 weighs 80,000 pounds but when fully fueled it weighs 1,060,000 pounds so it really does give you an idea of how much the, of the entire massive rocket is just a big fuel tank. And just after 9 minutes and at a little over 100 miles above the ground the fuel is exhausted and these engines turn off. 
Now explosive charges would separate both it and stage 2, leaving the stage 3 in control. You may have noticed that these two stages are not the same circumference, therefore an interstage would sit here connecting the two. By the way, these yellow structures are used to transport these different stages, and wouldn't be going to space themselves. The Stage 3 section was built by Douglas Aircraft Company in California, and it was powered by a single J-2 rocket engine, so the same as on Stage 2, but with a lot less of them. And it was also powered by hydrogen and oxygen. These smaller tanks have helium to pressurise the fuel lines and replace the tank's volume as the fuel is burned. This single J-2 propels the spacecraft into the parking orbit, where it will move around the Earth while checking systems, and then this engine activates again for around 6 minutes to leave the Earth's orbit and head towards the Moon. This here is an auxiliary propulsion system, which provides 3-axis attitude control, needed for activities such as docking with the lunar module, and the eulage burn prior to the second firing of the rockets to leave the Earth's orbit. And by the way, the eulage burn is done in zero gravity environments to ensure that the fuel is pushed back towards the aft part of the tank so that there's a steady flow to the main engines. This system had its own separate fuel source which was monomethylhydrazine as fuel and nitrogen tetroxide as the oxidizer. As I walk between the two modules you can see this small circular device and this was where the fuel would enter while the whole rocket was sitting on the launch pad and you can see the piping on the inside. In here would be a smaller oxygen tank and above that, which is what you can see here, is the liquid hydrogen tank. Once again, almost the entire structure inside the rocket skin is simply fuel tanks. And then turning around, we can see storage space as the lunar lander would actually be positioned in here. And while the stage 3 fuel will have been used up escaping Earth's gravity, this all continues together towards the moon. The next section here is the service module, which would have circled around the moon while two crew members landed, and then it propels everyone home with its own fuel systems. And then in front of that is the command module, which will look very familiar. In fact, that's where the crew spend much of their time, and that's how they return to Earth. In fact, here's Apollo 15's command module, currently on display in Dayton, Ohio, which you can see looks especially burnt as it survived the extreme heat on re-entry. Now as everything hurdles towards the moon, the service module actually separates and turns right around, so that the command module then connects to the lunar lander and pulls it out of the storage position within the stage 3. Now you may be wondering about this structure above the command module, and this is the launch escape system. As you can see there's rockets here, and these can be activated and lift the entire command module up and away from the rest of the rocket if there was a major malfunction during launch. This system is jettisoned just after stage 1 is released as they're now too high in the atmosphere to use it. And from the very top, we get a bit of a glimpse back at this huge vehicle which at 363 feet was almost double the size of the space shuttle. It also weighed 6.2 million pounds fully fueled and ready for takeoff, which is around 15 Boeing 747-400s. This one on display in Houston is the only Saturn V anywhere in the world made up of flight certified hardware that was ready to go into space before the program was cancelled. I hope you enjoyed the video and there's many more similar ones on my channel including a tour around the Space Shuttle Orbiter and a B-52 bomber. Thanks for watching.